The human food chain is continuously threatened by the increasing number of outbreaks of transboundary animal and plant pests and diseases that may impact human health, food security, livelihoods, national economies and global markets. Climate change, movement of people and the shift in trade relationships are just some of their causes. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has been working to address these issues since the 1950s and the devastating losses over the world from major outbreaks of transboundary diseases led the organization to establish the Empress Program in 1994. FAO has been working with member countries, international partners and donors, providing technical leadership and coordination in the prevention, prediction, containment and control of emergencies caused by a defined list of major threats to food chain crises. Empress started off with four prime elements, early warning, early reaction, research and coordination. In 2009, Empress encompassed food safety and was subsequently expanded to include aquatic animal health and forest health. By 2010, we had already eliminated rinder pests from the world and in 2011 there was official announcement jointly by the Director General of FAO and the OIE that the world was rid of rinder pests. The entirety of FAO's work in this area was never analyzed or reviewed as a continuum, and the scope of this evaluation was expanded from the emergency prevention system to cover the range of FAO's work in transboundary animal and plant pests and diseases and food safety threats beyond the direct remit of the program. In the evaluation, this is referred to as the Empress Approach, which identified a total of 851 projects. The first challenge of the evaluation was to look back at the historical period between 1994 and 2012. To do so, a number of key actors were invited to Rome to map the successes, gaps and milestones over the 18-year period. Locust uh, control now through Empress works very well because it's uh, gathered all the uh, countries who are affected by a locust and uh, there is a good coordination between the countries. Empress provides uh, tools, uh, technology also to implement preventive control, to intervene, to avoid the locusts to become uh, most dangerous and to spread to other uh, uh, countries. The other one is uh, the, the work that's been done on controlling uh, highly pathogenic avian influenza and other related zoonotic diseases and this has had uh, big impacts particularly in Asia and now is being extended to Africa. <laughs> The evaluation then analyzed the more recent period, starting from 2013, looking at all the components of transboundary animal and plant pests and diseases, including aquatic animal health, forest health and food safety. Empress deals with terrestrial animals as well as aquatic animals, fish and other species. And fish is very important for human nutrition. More than 50% of the fish people eat in the world come from aquaculture. The farm fish, like any other animal, livestock, also get disease. With the increasing population, you have to farm more and more fish to feed the world. So more and more farming means more and more disease problems, more and more pathogens moving from one continent to the other, one country to the other. So emergency prevention is a paramount in sustainable production of fish. No other CG centre nor UN agency has any involvement whatsoever in global forest protection. The way that you deal with forest pests is different from the way you work with agriculture. In forestry, a lot of times you don't see anything until it's too late. Trade has increased, travel has increased, the time that, to travel, more and more people and more and more uh, events are happening where people are bringing 
um, insects and diseases with them. There are movements of pests all the way around the world which are carried in wooden packaging materials, in commodities, and so an action started to be taken that way. So if there are unknown uh, new pests in forestry, in fisheries, in, in plant protection, in agriculture, then we can see if there is a chance to actually be able to assist the country. In the food safety component of Empress relates mainly to the increasing complexity and globalization of the food chains. Also the fragmentation, let's say, of food chains that become international. So they, the food is produced in one country and then it's traded through different intermediaries and this creates global value chains that are sometimes very hard to follow. Empress Works contributes to this to, through this, its regulatory components and uh, in very close collaboration in fact with the World Health Organization. FAO has a very important role uh, in uh, addressing these transboundary pests and diseases because they threaten the sustainability of many of the important crops, uh, cassava or banana or wheat. These are staples uh, that contribute to food security in the world. An ongoing threat uh, is a disease of banana. Uh, it's caused by a fungus called Fusarium. Experts think that uh, if this particular disease is not managed, banana could disappear. So although there's very high uh, competency at headquarters to then uh, translate this into action all the way to the field is very challenging um, within the limitations of the, the resources also available. The evaluation found some really good results uh, at regional and country level. Uh, just to name some examples, uh, the African Solidarity Trust Fund, a program in Southern Africa that uh, brought together uh, several technical ministries to discuss uh, various sanitary and phytosanitary measures. Um, another good example is the One Health Strategy developed with the support of the FAO Asia Pacific Office or some community level examples like uh, the work done through pharma field schools or community animal health workers uh, networks in a number of countries that show that FAO can achieve some really good results in this area but they're not always uh, linked in a coherent way to the global level of the Empress program. So there is uh, an issue of fragmentation in the Empress-like approach. The one key message from this evaluation um, is that FAO really needs to make an effort to go that extra mile to bring it all together under a coherent approach. And it can really make a difference in terms of helping member countries uh, prevent and avoid economic and health-related crises that are a real threat to resilience. <laughs>